Right guys, we are back into this first game of the second best of three between these two teams, Dr. Norman Collegiate, uh, Bethune Collegiate Institute on the blue side, and West, Northview High School, sorry, on the red side. We see Draven band out, Zed, Zach band out, and Thresh band out. There has been a change of roster here for Northview High School, uh, Art of Horse actually coming in instead of their previous jungler, so it'll be interesting to see how he does. Um, that means the bands and picks have actually changed around as well. So we're going to have totally new bands and picks. Zed and Zach being banned out. I expect an least ban as well here from the Northview High School team. But I don't know who Dr. Norman to ban out. Lee Sin. Have to ban him away from Lee Shin. Yeah. It's just, he's just too strong on that guy. Wait, so who did they take out? They took out... The jungler. Alright. Wait, okay, so they have Art of Horse now. I think, I feel, I think Art of Horse is is the is the actual jungle. I don't, I'm not too sure the rosters. I mean, I don't think they actually have set rosters. Anyways, okay, so they took out. Okay, hold on, wait. Okay, they took out wrong answer. Okay, actually, no, yeah. I'm pretty sure Career for Life. Is, I mean, Art of Horse is the normal jungler, actually. Okay. Anyways, um, gonna be seeing him coming into play here. So I think it'll be interesting to see. How this one goes which is with the new jungler, and that's the change on the side of Northview, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, Northview going to be red team. Doctor Norman going to be that blue team there. Complete new slate in this best of three. Two have picks coming up. Looks like at least once again a very highly contested pick today in HSL. I think in HSL in general as well. At least just really, really, really popular as well. It looks like you're going to be seeing Vane and Kennedy being picked. They're both changes we've seen before today. I do believe. Tell Art of Horse is the support. I'm sorry for getting that wrong. We don't know the, uh, the, the, the guys super well. So, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Anyways, these picks, what do you think? Well, Magus Sunday on Elise has been incredible in the last couple of games, and, and he's actually dedicated his performance to me, so I, I could just see him doing really well again. Um, Lucid Air picking Tristana. I haven't seen him on Tristana thus far. Um, be interesting to see what he decides to do on her, because some people go for the early zeal wield, going into that attack speed, trying to get more explosive shot passive damage off, but other people go for the sort of more damagey build with the infinity edge early, and then using your vapid shot, which is your Q, to get your extra attack speed. Um, the vein pick on the other team for career for life, probably going across, I don't know, staying on career for life, so I keep getting him confused because he played mid lane for that one game as uh, Fizz. Yeah. Um, He's that they're both hyper carries, and it's going to be interesting to see who wins the early game. I think Lucid Air should probably have it on the Tristana, but Vayne does have an okay early game as well. If you can land those silver balls, procs, get three of them off, you can do a lot of damage, especially since it's doing percentage health as opposed to uh, just flat AD. Yeah, yeah, those can just do so much damage, even in the early game. You know, it scales into the late game, but it also just does well in the early game in general. So well, let's see how it goes. Looks like we might be seeing. A Nocturne pick coming in here, which is something that was hovered over earlier. And we did talk a little bit about it, but no, oh, no. Okay, he's switching between. We can't talk about it. We can't do this. <laughs> We're getting bait into it. And yep, it's going to be the uh, the Nalus once again. I really want to see a Nocturne pick, honestly, coming out here. Because Nocturne, very entertaining champion to watch and, and see how it does just uh, in the team. However, we're going to be seeing Nautilus as well as Zyra. I. I can't remember, was Zyra pick today? I don't think so, right? Uh, we haven't actually seen a Zyra pick thus far, no. There you go, so... You've never seen the Zyra, which is an extremely strong support, which is a little bit surprising to see her being picked up so late into the series, but... You know, whatever you seem to want to do here, as, um... You know, what do you think about the Zyra pick, Zyra Vane? What do you think about that? That's a really strong lane. With the Deadly Bloom, she's got a lot of poke, and she can use those Strangle Thorns as well to catch someone out. Tristana... We've talked about this a few times, her jump is programmed so that she's at the original position until she lands at her ending position. So a Stranglethorns will still proc even if it hits her at her original position. Um, just want to quickly say good luck to Wrong Answer doing your AP language homework, hope that it goes well. Thanks very much for playing in the last few games. Um, see a Cassidy oh, yeah, being... See, I should be do doing my... Yeah, I should be doing my AP homework. Yeah, I should be sleeping, so... I'm all too cool for that, dude. Too cool Can't for school. Can't be helped. Um, 
Zergo actually picking up Cassadin, and with the way that he's played on Zed thus far, Cassadin is probably going to be really into his playstyle. He can get that Rift Walk, get the extra damage off, and um, like he should be really, really, really strong. And Cassadin's been banned out a couple of times, so I don't know actually if, he, if that's just managed to slip through the ban phase, and he's actually very experienced on this. You, we, I mean, we just don't know at the moment. Um, Udyr being hovered over here, I don't think it's going to be an Udyr, so I'm not going to talk about that for the moment. See the cannon pick up here again, and cannon is so strong, and we saw Cleanse playing it so well. Over here. I think it's Cleanse, it could be C, capital I, Ians, but I think it's Cleanse, I'm going to keep saying Cleanse. Um, Cleanse is so strong on this cannon, played it really well in the first game, and since then hasn't actually picked up. Irelia being picked up, and Irelia really come back into favour since the phage changes and the changes to Triforce as well. Um, Triforce, now that it gives you that extra movement speed with the phage, 20 if you land an auto attack and 60 if you kill a minion or monster or champion, really able to keep on people and lock onto them a lot better than she used to be able to and that was one of her major weaknesses. She had the blade surge for a gap closer but apart from that wasn't really able to stick on her opponents and now with Phage being changed she's able to do that a lot better. So now that these two team comps have uh, sort of resolved themselves I think what we'll be seeing is sort of a, an AOE comp coming out from Northview High School. They've got Cannon Ultimate, the Stranglethorns from Zyra, Nautilus with the Depth Charge as well and Irelia jumping around using those Transcendent Blades as well. And from the blue team here, Dr. Norman, we're going to see a more of a pick-based comp. Tristana will be in the back line just trying to do that long range damage, 750 range on her auto attacks at the end of the game. Elise will be jumping onto the back line of the other team, trying to get on them, use that cocoon, use the venomous spider, uh, venomous volatile spider and the venomous bite to get damage down. Sona using her crescendo across as many people as possible, and the Dominus coming out from Renekton as he slices and dices through the team as well. Casting will be rift walking around, trying to get his damage down, not using up too much mana though, because that is a major problem with Casting. If the purple team, if Northview can deny Cassadin's blue buff, he's going to have to go into a Chalice of Harmony or a Tear or a Catalyst into Rod of Ages just to be able to keep himself sustained in that manner. Uh, what do you think about these two teams, Crusader? Um, okay, so looking at these two teams, there's a lot... Okay, so it, it's, it looks a lot like they want... Okay, so... Okay, okay. I need to collect my thought. Thoughts. Okay. It looked like Dr. Norman went... Like they like they knew what they're gonna pick. We're gonna pick this up. You know, we're gonna get strong, strong assassination with um with uh, Elise and Cassidin, and then the good fun line with Renekton. We're gonna get have Sona with the AOE CC. We're gonna have Tristan shooting him from the back line, and then we're seeing, <coughs> excuse me, and then we're gonna be seeing uh Northview High School. I think there's a lot more reactive picks in here. You know, Aurelia being picked up to just try to trade up in the top and a lot better with her stain. They have Zyra in there for a lot of disengage. Now it's through some single target and or potentially multi target CC. And um that's the kind of what I think about it. Although they both have strong late games, I do I I really like the team kind of a lot more on Dark Norm. I think they could do a lot just in the fact that they could really pick off people pretty well and they can still go into team fights very strong with that Sonic Crescendo. Yeah, I was talking about the fact that there's a lot of AoE ultimates coming out from the uh, Northview team. I mean, you've got the Slicing Maelstrom, you've got the Stranglethorns. They're going to be good at knocking people up in an, in, a, in a sort of an area of effects. And if people get caught out in that, then it's going to be weak for them. But you have got the Repel, you've got the Rocket Jump, you've got the Slice and Dice, and you've got the Rift Walk. So only really Sona doesn't have an ability to get away from that. Um, 40 seconds before we get into this game. Do you think there's going to be any, any level 1 action, Crusader? Um, thinking about this level 1 action, I feel like... Man, okay, so I, I, I definitely feel like um, Northview High School would actually have the advantage, mainly because they have Zyra, which can get a really good multi-target CC just at the beginning of the fight. Although, I wouldn't expect any of these teams to invade, honestly. Um, both of them don't have the strongest early games ever, so... I would expect... <coughs> excuse me, I would expect them to just, uh, go standard. As you've already seen in these past three games that we've watched. Hmm. I mean, there has been quite a defensive start from both teams in most of the games. We see, actually, our support is going support, and apparently is very 
good on support. So it'll be interesting to see how that sort of ends up going, especially with Korea Brett moving across from his supporting role, which is what he's been doing for most of the game, into a jungling role, because sometimes that yeah. transition can be quite difficult. And, I mean, with Dr. Norman on a rampage at the moment, 2-1 and one at the moment in these last three games, it'll be interesting to see if he can adapt quickly enough to uh, actually turn this round and get the momentum back for the Northview team. Yeah, that is definitely something we, need, we need to watch out for. Is um Arthur Force now filling into this support role? I think this is how they normally play. I I honestly cannot remember too well, but I'm this is at least how I remember them. So getting into this loading screen here, and um, but yeah, Doctor Norman has just been on their upward momentum. They all have to like w whichever team wins this best of the wins the summer tournament as well as some IP prizes. So obviously that's gonna be. Extremely, extremely fun. Yeah, um, it's exciting stuff. Yeah, although it might be a little bit difficult for you because it's like four a.m. Right, it's about four thirty at the moment, but I am excited. I am hopped yeah. up on caffeine at the moment. Got my black coffee going, so looking forward to this game. Um, it's going to be like the, the level one is going to be interesting. You said that Doctor Norman are going to be defensive. I could see them going just really aggressive, just being like. Like let's just try and get some damage. I mean, they are they are weak early game actually looking at it. But if I were them, it's probably because I'm tired. I'd just be like, yeah, screw it. I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna surprise them. I'm gonna get the damage down. And if we get a flash, if we get a kill, more than worth it. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and look over at these runes really quickly. And it's looking pretty standard, of course, no, for some lefts on eight carries. Okay, armor penetration. I, 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 I looked over, I thought I was checking Renekton's, I saw Magic Pen, but I was actually taking cast, and so that makes a little bit more sense. Of course, lifesteal uh, on that cannon, as well as some attack damage, you really get that early harass in there, it's a really popular start. We're actually seeing a lot of ability power, and as well as magic penetration and mana regen coming off of our horse and Zyra, so not even going for utility at all, just wants to go for damage. Which is a little surprising, you know, maybe not. Right when we get into game, instant pause coming off. Only what a surprise, what a surprise. Do I don't think it's been, so I don't think we've had one game where we haven't had an instant pause. And we actually see a Hunter's Machete coming out from Nautilus, so. Yeah, he was that, able to that first buy is going to like. That's going to dictate how this game goes, and we actually are back into game. I mean, there's already there's already a hundred gold lead right now on uh, the team uh, Doctor Norman, so this game's pretty much over now. Yeah, Doctor Norman had basically won it already with that hundred gold. gold lead. Oh my! How did they do that? Uh, it's actually interesting because that means that Art of Horse has not gone for full he's utility. He's got. He's just gone to P, dude. He has twenty five AP. Um, he's also sitting on thirty two MR. He only has nineteen armor. That's going to be an issue, I think. He's also relaying quite a bit of magic penetration. As actually, you might be seeing both teams invading as they're all grouping up here. Now they're just going for early wards out. Yeah, just a bit of protection coming out, really. I think um, Korea Brad is just standing in this bush with the rest of his team. They're just going to be defensive, make sure it's just there for their team. We actually see five Doran's items coming out again. Um. Doran's blades on Vayne and Kenan. We talked about that early Doran's blade on. Kennen last time so I mean Cleanse really managed to utilize it to its full potential getting the extra damage down that you want from the auto attacks and managing to get those stuns down as well so he could get out more auto attacks than usual um, both teams around their red buffs looks like it's going to be a defensive start two wards actually coming out from Dr. Norman and there's actually a ping on the blue buff here they're going to try and invade this and this is going to be really interesting yeah um, I'm not too sure if they were seen by that ward there but oh, it looks like oh yeah they were seen so this trade, they'll just trade. It looks like they'll just trade these blue buffs here. And that's just gonna be it. They'll just trade blue buffs, and um, go ahead and leave. I mean, this has happened quite a few times with what I've seen, where like both teams are like let's invade, and they both end up invading. It's like, well, we just took each other's blue buffs. I mean, the problem for Northview is they have no idea where the Doctor Norman team are. Vayne and Zoe are coming down yeah. towards this blue buff. They will be there. They won't be there in time for it to be started. They might be there in time for it to be ended if they don't smite it. They're actually not going to go. It doesn't look like they're running towards the blue buff, so should be... Yeah, it actually got yeah. taken out really fast. Wow. Well, Magasane with the very, very nice leash for himself there. Gonna go ahead and get out of there. Meanwhile, Korea Bread. Pretty much doing the same, I think. And looks like both are gonna... Oh, actually, no. 
Doc Norman decides to not clear out that blue buff, so denying. Uh, There's an engaging bot lane flash away buff. there by Shaniqua. Ignite had gone down on him as well, and there was just like he just got caught out by a strangle, uh, a grasping boots there. Okay, um. It looks like uh, it's just a bit of a trade here. Shaniqua having used that flash already, he's gonna have to be really defensive in this bottom lane. Lucid Air taking quite a lot of damage as well, they're both down to about half health. And it's. Like, Vayne's Eye was such a strong lane because of the early poke. Grasping Boots comes out, Lucidus getting taken really low. One more auto attack will get him. So much damage down on career life as well, and they're just going to have to back away. They don't have the army of Perseverance at the moment, so they're not going to be able to sustain up through this. And top lane is going to be a bit of a farm fest, I think. I don't think Permalove can take down Li Shin. And the fact that he's playing the as well makes him just really able to be passive and use that hit on soul just to life steal up, getting that extra true damage. Cassadin is going to probably be zoned out a lot by Cleanse here in the middle lane, or should be, using that Null Sphere to try and get some damage down, using the Silence as well. But Silence doesn't stop auto attacks, so he's going to be able to just use his auto attacks to get extra damage down even when he's silenced. Nautilus is actually stealing away the Wraiths here from the Dr. Norman team, and it looks like actually he's going to be an engaged in mid lane. Here comes Magus Sunday. He's going to get caught out by Korea Bread, cleanses there as well, and he uses that repel just to get out of the fight. Doesn't want to be fighting there, it's just way too dangerous for him. CS across the board, Renekton 21 CS to 11 on Irelia, doing so well. Korea Life taking quite a bit of damage from the explosive shot as well, and there is a war, there's no ward there, so if Maga Sunday decides to come round and gank, he might be able to get a kill in that bottom lane. Nautilus actually coming around here, Korea Bread using quite a lot of pressure here in the jungle early game and uh, Crusader Kittens actually had to go across and take a phone call so you're stuck with me for the couple minutes there's a nice explosive shot and here comes Elise Magus Sunday coming in from the side nice power gun there's going to be an engager in the bot lane Vayne has to flash away Art of Horse has to flash over the wall as well and that's two flashes down in the bottom lane I'm sorry Arsuus I'm just not good enough for you I realise that flash away I, in the I top swear, lane as well I swear that's the last time I'm going to have to deal with other stuff I'm extremely sorry about this but Hopefully we'll really go smoothly with this uh, last best of three. And Mega Sunday, not able to get it. So four minutes in here, no first blood. I think this is the latest first blood, potentially. No, the last first blood, the latest first blood was that one time. Here comes the top lane. Irma Love, yep, we might be seeing this first like going down right now. Oh, the stash away from the dredge line. Not going to be able to pick that one up there. And uh, very, very close to Inko, Irma Love. Utilizing his slice and dice pretty well there. He had to flash though, so. Did lose that summoner spawn career, but actually wants to take advantage of this one. He's gonna be going around Magus Sunday. Is right inside the brush, lands a cocoon instantly onto him. Shield coming off from career bread here. And he get jumped on here. I don't think they can really chase after this one. He might be able to return some damage. His shield was able to absorb quite a bit of damage. And uh, let's go and back off as wow, in the million. Zergo almost going down. Yeah, escaping on basically zero health there. Um, Permalove had actually used this flash in a previous engagement, just getting away from the dredge line, so he didn't use it when he did that nice slice and dice duke there. Um, both flashes are used in the bottom lane here for the north view team as well, so I'd like to see a gank coming out there. But the problem is Lucid Air is going to naturally push it. He's Tristana, that's what Explosive Shot does, it pushes the lane, and so they're really going to struggle to get a good gank off in the bottom lane. Yeah, they definitely have to be careful of this one. Out of ways, throwing off some plants here. Shuka Hoshi actually already taking some damage, so very harassing bottom lane, but really just not able to commit to any real fights. I think we're a little bit too scared about uh you know what kind of what the other bombing is able to do. And it looks like however Magus suddenly wants to come in here for the gank. If he goes around the river side, he will be seen, but it looks like he's hanging up around and trying to bait this one in Shuka Hoshi taking a lot of free damage though. He's really trying to bait the engage coming off here. That's a career for life. He's really... Oh my gosh, he's going to go in. What's going to happen? The double stand does land. Shaniqua Hoshi goes down. First blood for career for life. Magus Sunday trying to get into here, but career for life is running away. Condemn does come off. Magus Sunday repels. Comes back down on career for life. However, not able to get that. Now under force. Running under the tower. Another snail lands onto Lucid Dare. The barrier comes off for the same, but no, the auto attack of career for life picks up the kill. And that is two kills for Vayne already in the early game. Magus Sunday does not able to make that gank happen. They tried to bait it out. It did not work at all. Yeah, way too much effort into baiting that one out. The cocoon missed as they came in. Sona had already gone down. Shaniqua just melted there. Um, and 
after that cocoon miss, they probably should have said, okay, that's fine, we'll, we'll leave it. But then they got near the tower, started splitting their focus. Um, Lucidaire focused down Korea for life. Maga Sunday focused down Art of Horse and just meant that uh, Korea for Life was able to get those final couple of auto attacks down onto Vayne. The flash coming out a bit too late while that crossbow bolt was in the air, managing to pick up that kill and a double kill for Vayne. A BF sword bought seven minutes into the game. That is so strong and really hopefully for the Northview team going to be able to snowball Vayne into this late game build that much quicker. Yeah, of course, this late game Vayne of always being that terrorizing Vayne, she's actually going for more damage instead of the normal build, which would be the, um, which would be, uh, the build attack by the Cutlass. Yeah, attack speed with Blade of the King, but going for this BS2, which is pretty interesting. Um, earlier today, I was expecting, like, is coming for getting top lane. I get top lane, Leech Jane getting jumped on here. Gonna get completely dived onto Zergo with that kill. Rome Castman coming in here. Oh, oh! First up goes down to the tower shots. Not tanky enough. Was unable to run away uh, fast enough to try to get out and ends up paying the price and going down. So, extremely unfortunate there. However, it does give Primula, I mean, no, not Primula, but Zergo a kill. And he has been able to snowball these assassin type and really mobile champions. Uh, you know, we've seen Zed, now we're going to see casting out from him. He's really been able to snowball these quite well, so we might be, you know, he, that might be a little bit of a better trade, at least for, um, as, if we think about Zergo, because he might be able to just keep that roaming up and find some advantage in this. Yeah, I mean, he might be able to, but if we look at uh, Cleanse, he's actually gone double Dorans. Oh, engage in bot lane! <laughs> Playing Shaniqua Hoshi, taking so much damage. Strangle Thorns came out. We see their rocket jumping away, but gets hit by that third proc of several bolts. Maga Sunday wants to come down here and help out his bottom lane. His bottom lane is just in such a state of distress. Maga Sunday going into spider form, but not really able to get in there. And yeah, what we talk about cleanse is double Dorns blades, and he's just throwing off damage. Shaniqua's gonna go down. Here comes the repel as well. Yeah, there's their um, condemn going on to Maga Sunday. We see there does jump in there, does pick up the kill onto Art of Force. Career for life, able to flash in, picks up the kill onto Maga Sunday. Now Lucy Dare gonna get completely caught up by the CC. Another double kill coming in from Career for Life. Really just picking these up left and right. Yeah, I mean, the problem for them there was the bush was watered. Like, that was their main problem. Um, if that bush hadn't been watered, the flash away by Lucidaire would have been great. Uh, sorry, the rocket jump away by Lucidaire would have been great. They would have escaped. It wouldn't have died, but the bush was watered. Career for Life could get that final shot away and manage to get the kill. And just, they're not trading well. Every time they've gone in, Shaniqua Hoshi's died before Maga Sunday's even been in the fight. And if the cocoon misses as well, Vayne, BF Sword, Double Dorans, you're not going to kill that early game. It's just going to be able to micro away from you. Transcendent Blade's actually coming in here top lane, trying to get some damage onto Permalove. Good trade here from both of them, and it looks like they're going to have to back away. Um, Negatron Cloak coming out there from Cleanse yeah. in that middle lane, and that's just showing he just doesn't want to die here. I don't know what he's going to build that into. It does build into an Abyssal Scepter, but that's not really a very commonly seen item. And Shaniqua Hoshi oh, getting oh, caught. Bottom, like, Shadow does come down and loose there. He's jumping in here. Bust shot comes out, but career for life. He's still alive. Turning this one around. Can he lift throughout the zone? He's so low. Will be shut down. Lucy there with that one rocket jump away and will get out. It's an engaged in top lane. Oh, yeah. Looks like another uh, dive wants to come out here. Career break goes down. Primula might be going down. Lucian's still trying to chase after, flashing in there. Permalove is still alive, and oh, there is the call of the mid. Oh, but Cannon's coming in, Cleanse is coming in. Out of Horse is going to get taken down in the bot lane by Zergo. Yeah, Zergo getting in there. Meanwhile, up at the top lane, slicing Maelstrom coming in from Cleanse. Magus Sunday with the repel, flash away. Will be stunned by the Shuriken. It's another auto attack. Cleanse picks up that kill, and action coming around all around the map right here. And there's so many kills coming out. Wow. Just, uh, I don't even know where to start. Okay, we'll start in the bottom lane, then we'll go to the top lane, then we'll go to bottom lane again, and then we'll go back to top lane. So, bottom lane, a nice 2v2 engage, a good crescendo from Shaniqua after getting caught in the strangle roots. Caught out Vayne a little bit, and she started to go down. She hadn't gone back for a while, and we see now she's actually picked up that straight bloodthirst after only having a BF sword. 
They managed to get the kill on Vayne using that Buster Shot, using the exhaust. They had to burn everything and they almost went down. Like Lucidaire almost died. Shiniko Hoshi got taken out really quickly as she has been. 0 3 2 now. And they all, Lucidaire almost died as well, but managed just to pick up the kill, got the reset on Rocket Jump and jumped away. While that was happening, uh, Korea Bread and Lishian got engaged on by Perma, Perma Love and Maga Sunday in the top lane. Uh, actually looks like Korea Bread's going to get caught out a little bit in, his, in the jungle here while this is all happening. No, he's managed to escape. So yeah, Korea Bread and Lishian got engaged on by Maga Sunday and by Perma Love. They dived the tower using that Dominus. Permalove had to flash away because he'd already taken the tower shot after they took Korea Bread down. Engage in bot lane, final hour coming out from Korea for life, but he's going to disengage that. Um, oh, he wow. might want to go. Okay. This so much damage thing. coming down. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so Permalove managed to pick up the first kill. Lee Shin tried to flash in, use his uh, blade search as well. Cleanse getting taken quite low in mid lane. He's going to have to back out, I think. No lightning rush coming in. Damage. You might watch this one around. Riffwall coming get in here, however. It looks like very, very close, but Zergo is able to come out on top in that trade. Just barely, though. He did take quite a bit of damage, but he's now 3 and 0. Yeah, really well done. Um, Anyway, go. Oh, no, Shaniqua Hoshi's gonna go. It's coming off. Crescendo lands onto 3. However, Shaniqua Hoshi was already locked down, and Korea Bread picks up that kill. And there's just no chance of analysis for you, Sona, yeah. with the, all this action that's just happening. Yeah, so Permala picked up the kill on Korea Bread. Lee Shin tries to use the blade search to get the counter kill, but didn't quite manage to get in range, so Cold and Meat came out and got the kill. Then, Zergo had got into bot lane and got managed to get the kill on Art of Horse, using that Ignite and using the Rift War to get into range. While that was happening, Cleanse went into top lane. Permala had started back and they managed to get away before Cleanse got there, but Maga Sunday got caught out, didn't have his flash up, oh, did have his flash up, flashed under tower, but the double Dorans from Cleanse managed to pick up the kills because he was only getting the kills with his auto attacks and his stun procs. While, after all of that had happened, we saw an engage in mid lane with uh, Zergo taking the kill on Cleanse, and we saw that engage in bot lane. Sonequa mm -hmm. Hoshi really getting caught out a couple of times. Stranglethorns has come out with that grasping roots, and because Zyra is building AP, Really just doing a lot of damage. Rift Walk actually coming in here mid lane. It looks like Zergo might get caught out. Well, here's a slicey Maelstrom. Art of Force is here as Primo comes in. And actually, here comes Maga Sunday. Pick up the kill on to Cleanse. It's like Zergo going to be able to get out extremely, extremely low. You know, West taking down the Sunday Hill. Did come out. Might have saved him. Not too sure. Bottom, I mean, actually, here comes um, Career for Life from the side. There is a dredge line going down onto Maga Sunday. There's a depth charge. Korea Bread picks up that kill. Korea Flash still trying to chase after this one. Might be a bad decision. He has to use that flash to get away. Zergo going to be going down. Double kill for Korea Bread. Lucy there getting undead for Korea for life. Picks up the kill. Lucy there over the wall. Has barrier. And is so low. Use the rocket jump to get out. And now has to run away. Can he get out here? Uh oh. He has this warrior to see where Lucian is going. It looks like he might be able to walk around, and he might just go for the suicide, actually. Yeah, it looks like he's going um, for the suicide. It will lose him double buff, but it's probably okay. worth it not to give the kill to yeah. anyone else. Yeah, definitely a good decision there. It's mid lane. Some damage coming down here from, uh, from career bread, but... I mean, these, these engages seem to have going a little bit in favor... Er, a little bit... I'm not even sure. It's just way too even right now. It's just kind of back and forth. Permalove's fight. getting engaged upon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as it looks like they're still really trying to take down the tires. Oh, tower shots! Pick up this kill onto Korea Bread. I mean, tower shots have just been the assists of this entire game. There's been so many dives and whatnot coming down. Yeah, um, I mean, I don't want to focus on one player at the moment, but what I've seen happening a couple of times is Shaniqua Hoshi is just not quite positioning himself properly in these fights. That last fight, he went in for the exhaust on Vayne. Vayne was already going to get the kill on Maga Sunday. And by going in for the exhaust, he put himself behind the tower. And that really limited his ability to get away. Vayne got one red buff proc on him. He tried to flash away, but you're going to die if you're under the tower. Depth Charge came out as well and just knocked him up. And a couple of times, he's just been caught out by the Grasping Roots and the Stranglethorns combination. Not quite positioning himself as well as he would like to. And I mean, Whoa, that can happen. Whoa, yeah. love the damage coming off onto Artifor. Stranglethorns coming in. There's a Slicing Maelstrom. Does land onto two. Buster Shot comes out. Oh, Cleanse is in a bit of a bad position. As Zero comes over the wall. Flash away from Cleanse. 
Musa there comes in from the side, gets the kill onto Arya Force there. And just five people now in the mid lane for um oh, Zerga's gone in on cleanse here, used here. the Bifork so much damage. Yeah, and there's the kill onto career bread ever. Career fly from the side here. Looks like he's gonna be trying to go for it, but he will be going down Maga Sunday with that kill. And just four people from Dr. Norman, I mean five people from Dr. Norman in this mid lane. And those people just kind of just throwing themselves at him. I'm not even sure what they're trying to do here. They do not have full, like the full five people. When they fight, it's just one at a time like this. Leeson trying to go in here under this tower. Might be able to pick up the kill. No, the repel does come out. Zero who hops right back in to pick it up. Maga Sunday lives with barely any health after that when repel getting him out. And that was only one person went down. I think that might have been all five people going down for it. For Northview, maybe all yeah, cleanse maybe four didn't of them. go down. Cleanse stayed alive. Okay, so, so four, four of them four went four down. One. And Zergo, ooh, we fuck over that wall to get out. Yeah, it was just lots of people going in bit by bit there. I mean, a lot of horse got caught out a little bit. Lots of damage coming down from Permalove, and then he came back into the fight while cleanse had to flash over the wall he didn't need to come back in the fight because cleanse still had flash and lightning rush he came back in tristana managed to get the kill used that rocket jump across towards cleanse who then flashed out of the fight and they just managed to pick up people bit by bit cleanse got dived on under the turret didn't quite go down because the rift walk didn't quite do enough damage but then career bread went down as well and it was just lots of itty bitty fights that didn't need to happen really and they just yeah i mean Dr. Norman have managed to snowball that into a little bit of an advantage here. They're only 500 gold in the lead, but a 4-1-3 Cassidy, 4 kills on Tristana, 4 kills on Renekton, 3 kills on Maga Sunday playing that Elise as well. It's really strong. I mean, they're well 6 kills on Vayne, and we need to like think about that, because that's 40 CS and 6 kills. It's really going to put them in the gold advantage at the moment. But if you've got one person who's fed against a team of people who die, oh, people cleanse in the mid lane. Christ. Wow, getting jumped on here. Knight. Or maybe Riffog picks up that kill. Dredgeine does come off here. Maga Sunday with the repel in. Shingo throws over the wall from Zergo. Gonna be able to get out with barely any health once again. He's just been so low all day. Oh, and, and Perma loving the top lane. Oh, oh, so split. oh, wow, Zergo, you're a survivor. Survivor. Leisha, meanwhile, went down. And um, up in where? The top lane? Yep. yep. Under that tower, it looks like. Anyway, looks here like I see. Of, uh, Dr. The Norman. Yeah. Dr. Norman pushing on just for these objectives. Really pressuring down this mid lane. Career for life has turned up here, and he he has six kills as you were saying, but they've just Northview just hasn't been fighting as a team. They've always had people somewhere else when there's like four members or three members of Dr. Norman mid lane, and when they went to respond, they just got really crushed down on too. And Permalove's going to get this turret well. in top lane as well. Just, they're getting these little advantages. That's three turrets to one. It puts them around 2,000, maybe even 3,000, uh, just over, t just under 2,000 gold in the lead. And they've gone around towards Dragon as well, which will be spawning in about three seconds. So if they can get that, it's just going to push them even further ahead in the gold. Um, although Magasande did start to go back there, he's going to stay around. He's got quite a bit of gold under his belt at the moment. 700 on. Magasande getting caught out by all the force. Oh gosh, no. Wow, the spelling actually blocks the shuriken, so it might have stopped that sun from happening there. Those are those are just like the bane of skill shots when you're playing against Elise. Those spidlings block so many things there, and uh, that Ken shuriken was one of those things blocked. So yeah, right. that happened. This dragon has just respawned. In the Cleanse! Way. Look at the here. damage there from Zergo. Oh, wow, he just oh, Zergo is so scary. Yeah. That's all that really can be said right now. And I, I'm not, can he? Is he seen? Oh yeah, he's totally seen by that ward. He might jump on the cocoon. It does lay cleanse in so much trouble. Repel coming down. Does get dropped back down. Slicing maelstrom does come out. I love the Maga Sunday with that kill. So he goes over the walker. Shendo does end on to Korea. Bread does turn around with his death charge. Is not able to get away. And three members of North um, of uh, Northview High School are down for the count. And just Zergo's gonna dive on Korea for life. Oh, he's gonna be gonna get, get dead, but a ripwalk over the wall into the tower though. And looks like the auto attacks will be able to pick it up. Maybe if that tower wasn't there, he would have been it would have been a brilliant escape. But that tower just uh once again assisting that kill there and Zergo does go down. 
Yeah, I'm really well responded there by Career for Life because he could have quite easily oh, got caught out of position. Right. He's going to get oh, jumped on though. He's still, he's still trying to go in. The condemn does come off. He is exhausted. The barrier from Lucid Dare. He cannot do all this one. He's still trying to. He actually does bring up the kill out to Lucid Dare. But he's flashing away. Can he get out? He is so low. Flash in from Mega Sunday. He goes into Spider Form. He cannot keep up. Career for Life. 1v3 them. Took two kills, one of them, and actually hold on, Mac is Sunday gonna get jumped on here by Career Bread. Can there be another kill here for Career for Life? Oh my gosh, they're still chasing after this one. The Nautilus is trying to just jump and leap his way there. There's a judge like coming off, shut down, Career Bread picking that one up. And that was just beautiful gameplay coming wow. in from Career for Life. Awesome, Taking horse! There goes. Oh gosh, Art of Boy is gonna be going down here. There go with that. Was it look at the strangle throwings off? However, before dying, career for life is still around. Dredgeon comes off. There go. Going to be going down once again. Killing spree now for career for life. Just the continuous fighting happening in this game. As even up in this top lane, Colonel are trying to chase that leech and did get stunned out here. He's actually he has this um Trinity voice, which is really interesting. However, career for life got condemned. Forced casting a roof off over the wall into the tower. He was stunned right there under the tower. It took about two or three tower shots. Career for Life was able to get there and take him out. And then he went for Justana. Got the condemn first off. Got the great condemn off against that wall. He was exhausted. He lost so much damage, but he was still able to out damage at Justana because of the amount of kills that he had. And he just, oh man, Career for Life. Really beautiful vein gameplay. And that's what they need to get back into this game is just having Career for Life keep on getting these kills, helping out his team. They really need to group up, I feel. Yeah, I mean, up until this point, I thought that uh, the Dr. Norman team really had the advantage, but it's just, it hasn't it hasn't gone like that in the end. Like, Vayne, with those six early kills they managed to get, with the Bloodthirster, with the Phantom Duster, they've been able to use those micro mechanics, and they have been double lift level mechanics, really. <laughs> um, just being able to use those mechanics to use the tumble, knock the condemn into the wall, but because the rift walk, the the motion of the rift walk occurred before the condemn hit, so he got hit into the wall. Oh, actually, actually get to the mid lane. Wait for him. He's gonna be bursted down. He will be going down. Lucid there with the kill onto that one. Double kill oh. for him. Max. As the chasing after his rocket jumping in here, but no, here it comes. Leechin gonna get stunned out. He will not be going down. Leechin is still alive, but no, the snare comes in from Art of Voice from the side. There's a double kill for Magus Sunday. Will be able to pick up the triple kill. And that is going to be the ace coming out for, oh man, for Dr. Norman. And they immediately burst it down. Career flight. They caught him out. Zergo sacrificed his life and immediately destroyed him and the rest of that fight was just it was just over after that. I mean, it's all up to career for life, I feel like. Um Yeah, I mean we were talking about it, weren't we? We were saying that if Career for Life gets caught out, he's gonna go like he's their damage, he's their damage dealer. I mean, Art of Horse did a really good job there managing to pick up the kill onto uh, Lucidair right at the end with his deadly bloom, but just wasn't enough. They just don't have enough damage, and Lishin has built this page, Blade of the Ruin Kim build, which is great, but you don't, you're not tanky enough to be able to uh, counteract the pure burst from Zergo. Permalove with that Cold and Meek as well, and Maga Sunday, who we've just seen do so much damage throughout these last few games, always yeah. building that spirit of the Ancient Golem, but the haunting guys, and because it's percentage health damage, as we said, that magic pen does a huge amount of extra damage. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens now because the Baron buff is across here on the Dr. Norman team and they have the advantage now. That gives around two and a half thousand uh, gold worth of items to each player. Like That's the stats that it gives and so yeah. that's going to push them to another 10,000 gold in the lead. So that's around 54,000 theoretically to 39,000 puts them about 15,000 in the lead. And if you said to a team, we'll give you 15,000 gold, but <laughs> one person on the other team is 10-4, you'll say yes. Every time you'd say, yeah, we'll be 15,000 gold in the lead. They're going to be able to sustain up. They've got that extra health regeneration. They've got the extra AD and AP for the burst that they're going for. Tristana is getting to that late game stage. She's got her Phantom Dance on Infinity Edge. If she can get one more item, maybe a Last Whisper, uh, you could go Blade of the Rune King, but you don't usually do that if you've gone Phantom Dance on Infinity Edge. 
Probably yeah. something life steely. She might go for a bloodthirster actually. Get that life steal. Get the stacks on it. Get the hundred extra AD and the extra twenty percent life steal you can get from it at max rank. If she can get that, they're really going to be able to knock down these towers quickly. And it looks like they're going to go and try and push down this mid tower right now. Yeah, lots of pressure coming in onto this mid tower. Top lane's pushing up a little bit here with these minions. Definitely going to be adding up there. But I mean. They, they they can't really fight under this tower here because there's quite a like the string of thrones will come out, the slicing maelstrom will come out, depth charge as well. And it can absolutely wreck the team right there if they try to go under that tower, so they do have to be careful. So let's just go ahead and opt out to go looks like for this bottom lane tower, which is uh, of course a little bit less risky uh, to go for. As yeah. they actually have some bursts coming in on to uh, career bread, and the thing is, Leashin is top right now, so they can really just force a fight for every five, and they'll probably win it, especially with that burn buff. Yeah, um, one thing I would like to see is a split push. I know it sounds, I, I like split pushes because they work, and mm -hmm. people seem to be against them because they're like, no, we should group as five, we should always play as five. They can burst down Vayne with only Zergo and Maga Sunday. They don't need the rest of their team there to do that, and Zergo and Maga Sunday have the best escapes for the Stranglethorn and, the, and uh, cleanses. Uh, ultimate there as well for that Thundering Maelstrom. I'd like yeah. to see Permalove go into top lane, make this Irelia, make Lishin have to move lanes and go into top lane. She's only got her Phage and Blade of the Ruin King. He has a... Oh, engage here actually on Lishin. Oh, yep, there we go. Permalove there to the Crescendo coming off. Beautiful. Career Break goes down immediately. Career for life is going to be next. Permalove with that kill. Slicing Maelstrom coming off, but it's defensive. They cannot face off against that. That was just huge burst coming in onto um, Career for Life and Korea Bread. Both of those guys going down here. And Dr. Norman is so strong. Art of Force deleted from the map. Legion is up next. Wow, looks like he's going under the tower here. It is going a little bit low. And I feel like this is going to be game right here. They might be able to finish this one off. Korea Bread's coming up pretty soon. Career for Life as well. Down to cleanse, we'll be taking some damage, but they're going for these Nexus Towers. Alright, Vayne is up in 6 seconds though, Career for Life will be able to get back into the game. He's got those Home Guard boots as well. They're going to get this in second Nexus Tower, cleanse down as well. Yeah, he's going to be going in onto this one, but the Nexus yeah. is going down way too fast. That's going to be GG, and that's going to be um, Do Dr. Norm with the Collegiate Institute with the first game in the second best of three series. This best of three series will be the decider of who wins. High School Star League Summer Tournament and wow just after that first game it's just like Dr. Norm it's just like okay we gotta we gotta make it real now we just gotta we gotta get back we gotta get our heads in the game we gotta put our heart in the really song are you really posting High School Musical to and me and then right we now. just we just really gotta come back from this and uh you really gotta get your head get your, get your head in the game got to, got get, you, got your get head your. in the game Get your head in the game. Um, yeah, I, the game, I, my I've talked stopped. about, I've, I've talked about it a few times, and dude, because it's high school. Oh my god, I'm a genius. Oh, uh, you are. High school, you're you're, high school, you're such a like, genius, man. Um, I've actually, talked about it. I didn't realize the correlation there until I said it out loud. Oh, by the way, the, the game info is the same. Yeah, I've I think we can. Do you think we can just keep talking? Yeah, of course next, we can. Um, yeah, we can do this. We can do this. Really? I'm, actually, I'm going to put the overlay up yeah. just so that we don't have my bad screen as we are. One thing that I want to mention again, and I've talked about it a few times, is how strong the top lane has been. And it's just been yeah. so influential in these fights. We look at it. Permalove went 7 1 13. Lishin went 1 6 1. That's what. It's, I don't want to say that's the only thing that won this game, but it's definitely a massive, massive factor. And the fact that. Both of these top laners, we saw it in the first game, Lishin was able to carry his team from top lane. We've seen it in the last three games that Permalove has just played so well and been able to have such influence on the game without actually having to roam as much as you'd expect. He's roamed a little bit, but most of it's been by that split push. Using the Sunfire Cape, using the Nexon's Cold Meek and his clear, really, to be able to split push well. I mean, when he played Shen, yes, it was a lot more about using the Stan United and using his ability to get into other team fights. But in these recent, in this last game, it was all about the fact that he was able to push Irelia out and not let her get to the stage where she can stick on Tristana and get a lot of damage down on Tristana. They had the people to jump on Vayne. Vayne didn't have um, the ability 
uh, to escape that, and no one had the ability to jump on Tristana like they should have been able to do. Um, I'm just going to get into game here. For some reason, my invitation hasn't actually arrived, so uh, let's, just, let's just get through. Here we are. I am into okay, the game. So Honestly, like we go back to that game, and we were we were talking about really early about Cleanse playing Canon, I think it was, and um and um we talked about him and how he went that no magic mantle first, and it was really interesting because I know that Negatron cloak first, because you're like, well, that's that's pretty strange now, because it's like. Cause it's like usually you want to rush, you know, either magic pen, or Rylice, or um, yeah, or no, what is it, dude? I know this other one, Zan is Zan is Hourglass. You want to rush that, and you didn't do that. If you did, I'm not sure if you know this. I noticed this, but I didn't want to. I didn't. I didn't really get the chance to say anything because the last game was so action packed. But he did, he never had a Zan is Hourglass, and that just really hurt. When he went yeah. in for a fight, and then he, he just didn't have Zani's Iron He wasn't able to go into defensive state. Especially right since going with Maelstrom. Especially since Doctor Norman were building such a bursty comp. Like you need something to negate the Rift Walk. You need something to negate the Neurotoxin coming out from Elise and the Venomous Bite as well. You need the ability to stop them just killing you. And yes, oh, the yeah, Missile Scepter 